Before we proceed to this video, let us introduce our team. We are Easy Feasib. Our goal is to provide projected financial aspect of feasibility study to college and graduate students with a very affordable price. We intend to create and publish this video publicly in order to provide free access to college and graduate students who have no idea what is a feasibility study and how it is done. To support our advocacy, we would like you subscribe to our YouTube channel and finish any advertisement on our video for us to earn and have the capacity to create more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much. Chapter 3 Marketing Aspect Part 2 Sample Size and Survey Questionnaire Now that you have your product or service, the competitive advantage, the projected population of your target market, and the average annual growth rate, it is time to compute for the sample size of your projected population, which is the step 4. Why do we need to compute for the sample size? Let's define first what is a sample size. The sample size is the computed number of respondents, which represents the whole population. So if a 10% of the respondents says that they are not interested with your product or service, it also represents that the 10% of your target market population are not interested with your product or service. So how is it computed? We compute it using the Slovens formula. The Slovens formula is n is equal to n over 1 plus is squared, where small letter n is equals to the sample size, big letter n is equals to the population, and the letter e is equals to the margin of error. The most common margin of error used in getting a sample is 5%, unless you are required to use other percentage. So in our last video, the projected population computed for the year 2023 is amounting to 1,223,423. We will be using the year 2023 projected population since the start of the operation that was discussed on the last video is the year 2023. Just replace them with the actual numbers, and there you go, you now know that the sample size is equal to 400 respondents. So when all of these 400 respondents say that they like your product or service, we can say that the whole 1,223,423 people like your product or service. Now that we determine who are the respondents, it's time to formulate a survey questionnaire, which is the step number five. Questionnaire surveys are a technique for gathering statistical information about the attributes, attitudes, or actions of a population by a structured set of questions. This is the best tool to use because you can really ask them questions that are necessary to compute for the demand. Let's set an example. Your product is a burger and the name of your business is Burger Queen. Your competitive advantage is that your burger is made of banana peel, which is healthy. Your target market are the people residing in National Capital Region or in Metro Manila. In terms of age, you need to eliminate the infants since they do not eat burgers. In terms of sex, there is no need to eliminate since food is marketable to all genders. After you put in all the questions that concerns demographics, you will now follow it with questions like, Do you eat vegetarian burger? Do you like the idea of banana peels as the burger patty? Do you like our product? How often are you willing to purchase our product? How much are you willing to spend for this product? Take note that if you ask them a yes or no question, once they say no, the survey should terminate immediately. If they don't eat vegetarian burger in the first place, then there is no need to ask them if they like your product or not and the following more questions after. You can use the Google Forms in order to make your life easier in asking potential respondents via social media and tabulating the results. After that, proceed to step number six, conducting the survey and interpreting the results. When all of your respondents are done with answering your survey questionnaire, it is necessary to tabulate the results so that you can easily do an interpretation of data. We can just call this as your cheat sheet. There are two sets of questions in your survey questionnaire. The first set is for demographics, which are used just to profile the respondents in terms of age, location, sex, and even sources of income. The second set is the set of questions necessary for the determination of the demand. As you can see, the number of the respondents who answers the first set is consistently 400 respondents. While on the second set of question, it keeps on reducing every time the question is answerable by yes or no. Why is that, remember? 
We do not let the respondent answer further more questions after choosing the answer no. Check on the question number one. It indicates their hat, the respondent, will no longer be continue answering the next question after answering no. This method of deduction is really necessary to filter how much percentage is really willing to buy my product or service. You will learn more of this topic on the next video. Right now, we need to make an interpretation of data gathered from the respondents. Just follow this table below. The first column is for the options yes or no. The second column is for the number of respondents who chose the options for yes or no. The third column is the percentage of respondents who chose yes or no. Create also a pie chart so that it is more informative and can be easily understood by the readers. Then put a statement on the lower part interpreting the data you gathered. For this example, the interpretation would be the 320 respondents or 80% eats vegetarian burger and the 80 respondents or 20% do not eat vegetarian burger. Do this in all the questions including the demographics. Make sure to interpret the demographics first before the second set of questions. Let's summarize what we discussed. Step 1. Gather available data for your target market. Step 2. Determine the annual growth rate. Step 3. Compute for the projected population. These three steps was discussed on the previous video. Make sure that you watched it so you can really understand our topic for this video. Step 4. Compute for the sample size. Step 5. Create a survey questionnaire for data gathering. Step 6. Conduct the survey and interpret the data gathered. The remaining steps on determining the marketing aspect of a feasibility study will be discussed on the next video. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel to see the next topic. The links to our social media accounts are on the description below. Do it the easy way with Easy Feasib.